Well, Michael Wolf is with us now for his very first British TV interview. He joins us from New York. Great to have you, Michael. Did you feel when you were writing you this book, um, when you were putting this book together, did you feel as if you were trying to bring down the president? At quite the opposite. I really, I went into this, into this project, into the White House with an entirely open mind. I really would have been willing to write a book about, about the unexpected success of Donald Trump. That, of course, is not what I found, quite the opposite. What I found was, was a White House filled with, um, with the people closest to him who turned out to be the people most worried about him. And when you talk about going into the White House, it's the details that are fascinating for many of us. Give us a sense of your access. Donald Trump, of course, denies that he spoke to you, denies that you had any access. Did you have a hard pass? Did you walk into the same place every time? Did you say hello to the same people? No, and no. Talk well, to the I, well, actually, yes, yes. I mean, exactly. I mean, it's it's um, um, amusing that that Donald Trump. Uh, says that I had no um, no access and no permission because I was there for uh, the better part of seven months. So I, one has to ask the question: How, in fact, did I get there? And the answer is actually Donald Trump. I I I said to Donald Trump, and he says that he doesn't know me, but in fact we've known each other for 20 years. Um, at any rate, I said to him, I would I would uh, I would like to come to be an observer at the White House. And he thought I was asking for a job. Um, I said, no, 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 no. What I want to do is write a book. Um, and he is, his face kind of fell as with, with absolute lack of interest in the idea of a book. So um, but he sort of said, OK, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Knock yourself out. And with that, using that, that basically became the, the, the carte blanche for me to enter the White House, um, to stay there, to um, uh, chat. Uh, sit down with almost every member of the senior staff again and again and again and again. And, and with Trump himself, how many times would you say you conversed with Trump personally since he became president? I, I you know, I, I have, I have, yes, I have said from the beginning on on, on this that I have spent f about three hours with Donald Trump through the campaign, the transition, and in the White House. But since he became president, how long would that have been? From the inauguration on, there was um, uh, we had one on the record session, and then I would see him in the West Wing, and we would chat. You didn't presumably see um, Bannon quitting Breitbart News as a direct consequence of this book, did you? I didn't. I, I, I didn't anticipate that. I mean, it seems to have been the outcome. So, um, and um, um, uh, my, my yes, question please. is: Do you think then that Bannon remains a key figure on the ideological right? Will Trump be weakened or strengthened without Bannon? Now, is he going to lose his base? Is he going to go softer, or does it make the whole next year of elections easier for him? You know, I, I don't think we we know the answer to this. It it may well it may may well mean mean that that Trump goes to the traditional Republican side, does not run um, run these um, the the sort of the wingnut party in congressional races, and it gives the Republicans an advantage. That's one scenario. Another scenario is that um, Steve Bannon decides to take down Donald Trump. And can he do that without Breitbart, without a base? I, I think, I, you know, I, I don't know. I think, I mean, Steve Bannon is, is, you know, his title in the White House was chief strategist, and um, Steve is nothing if not the ultimate strategist. So I would anticipate that at this point he is thinking through his options. Okay. But I, I've all, I felt when, he's, when he spoke to me for this, this book, that he was making uh, on his way to making a calculated break with the president, who honestly um, he seemed to regard as an idiot. I, I want to pick up on some of the critiques of the book, for example, that you let conflicting narratives get told, unclear whether you've been told these things firsthand, whether you've had conversations, whether they're direct quotes. Some have said it's directly out of Trump's own playbook. 
Um, why didn't you make it more rigorous? Did you ever feel let, as let me, well? Let me, let me, let me, yeah. Let me, let me talk a little, a little about about this this book. Um, you know, the book has become um, something more than a book. It has become a political event. So that means it's going to be the subject of an enormous amount of controversy. It means that a lot of people said things to me, and now they find themselves um, uh, as deers in the headlight. Um, my job on this, this book, and I really had one goal, it was to, as I sat there day after day on a couch in the West Wing, is to bring the reader right there so that the reader could experience what I experienced. So you don't so regret my job the fact not that to it's take so down unfiltered? The president. No, I actually, that's my job, is to bring an absolutely unfiltered account. You know, there's been a lot, there has been an enormous amount of controversy about that. But I, what I would, would say is that there's room for a lot of interpretations of this White House. Not only is there room, but there will be. So it is not just, there, there are the daily reporters who are doing a, 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 a good job of covering the White House. One but my account, and it's an account that has obviously resonated with people apparently everywhere, is a contextual story of what has happened let, over these number of months Michael, in the let White me ask House. You, uh, I am giving the forest for the trees. Sure. And, and at this point, you have written the book after he became president. Many journalists now are questioning how they covered the campaign. Is there a guilt that you or your colleagues were too caught up in a very sensational, sexy, fun story to cover? Do you think if you were going back over the campaign now, you would be covering Trump in a very different way? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, I was, first thing, I, I don't, I'm not sure I have any colleagues, which is um, part of the interesting thing here that allowed me to write in a totally independent version of this, of this White House. Um, but I think from the beginning, there has been a, a problem. No one has known how to cover Donald Trump. Um, when, this, when this administration began, many in the media said, we can't normalize this person. Well, effectively, the media coverage has normalized it. So, so the explosions every day have become so normal that we can no longer remember what happened the day before. I would maintain that I actually may have found a way to write about this presidency and this president. Okay, Michael Wolf, great to have you on the show. Thank you very much indeed.